welcome you to this time of worship with us this morning. We are happy that you are with us today. And to those who are worshiping with us online, we welcome you as well. It's good for me to be back with you once again. It's been a few weeks, but I'm glad to be here with you this morning. Uh, we want to thank uh, Neota and Pastor Kent and, and Ray and Katie for leading our worship in this service. Catherine, Kathy is recuperating from her, her hip. She's getting rehab at Hawthorne. And uh, so we're keeping her in our prayers uh, for a complete healing, but she's anxious to get back as soon as possible. Uh, Ash Wednesday is coming up this Wednesday. We have two services. We have the 815 service in the morning, chapel service with the school. We'll have the imposition of ashes and also celebrate the Lord's Supper. And at 630, uh, we'll also have an Ash Wednesday service also with the imposition of ashes and celebrating the Lord's Supper. So you can come to either service, whichever one you feel uh, you want to come to. Um, we all know that uh, we extended a call to uh, Pastor John uh, Van Schliebrecht, and Pastor John and his wife are coming this week. Uh, I think they get here on Thursday. They'll be spending the weekend with us. Uh, so we look forward to, to seeing uh, seen them, and I know you want to greet them and meet them, and so we'll look forward uh, to that as well. Um, I think with all of that, we can begin our time of worship this morning, and we have the kids singing with us today. We have a baptism this morning, so we have a great worship service uh, this morning. So our call to worship comes from Psalm 116. Trusting in the word of life given in our baptism, we are gathered together today in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice, he heard my cry for mercy. If you are able, let's stand and praise the Lord. Lord of all, 
His body the bread, his blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah. Let us pray. Oh, Jesus, on this Transfiguration Sunday, not only did you reveal your divine identity, but we were also given a divine summons of obedience to listen to you. We thank you, Lord, that you have loved us with an everlasting love and have chosen us to be your people. Bless our time of worship this morning in your precious name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Each week we take the time to come before our Lord and unburden ourselves by confessing our sins and receiving God's forgiveness. So let us now confess our sins. Our God is wise. What he plans is best and what he does is good. His plan is that none should perish but all live in his kingdom forever. He gives us the reconciliation through his son Jesus Christ who gave his life for us that we might live In Jesus, there is forgiveness from all that we have done wrong. Let us now confess our sins and receive God's forgiveness. O Lord, I confess that I have not lived as your child. My actions, words, and thoughts prove my sinful nature. I forget you are my father. I conveniently choose to walk another way when you send me to be your witness. So often I think it is by my power that I live and have what I own, even my faith. Forgive me, Lord. Bring me back to you through Jesus. I can no longer stand the distance between us. I hunger for your tender touch, your loving mercy and grace. We pause for a few quiet moments of private prayer and reflection. Dear friends in Christ, once we were enemies of God, but now we are children of the Lord. Rejoice! God has forgiven you all your sins and shortcomings because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. At this time, we're going to have the baptism of Luca. probably going to have to hold them. (laughs) This is a joyful day for the parents and family and friends of Luca Manuel Thomas Rodriguez Albuquerque, for this is Luca's baptism day. And so we say with the psalmist, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. There's two reasons we believe it's important in bringing Luca to the waters of holy baptism. First, because of God's great love for all people. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And then secondly, even though we have a God who truly loves us, he hates sin. He will not sweep sin under the rug. Luca, who looks so innocent and meek this morning, is in need of God's salvation in Christ because of a sinful nature, which we all have from our birth. The Bible says we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so Luca's need for baptism results in God's gracious love for people and yet his utter hatred of sin. 
Now we understand that Luke is not capable of verbally declaring his faith in Christ today, but we take comfort in the fact that God offers a plan of salvation through a means of grace for young babies and children who cannot yet verbalize a personal faith and trust in Christ. For God's word declares in Titus 3, he saved us, not as a result of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Lord. And God's word also declares, let each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you and your children. Baptism, however, is just the beginning. It's not an end in itself. And so we pray today that one day Luca will privately affirm and name Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior and promise to live for him always. Luca received the sign of the cross, both upon the forehead and upon the heart, as a sign and token that you belong to Jesus Christ, who has redeemed you. Now, Eric and Tracy, as parents, you can nurture this gift of baptism by teaching and obeying God's word in your own life as a model, by taking full advantage of Christian fellowship and seeking God's help in prayer. And so before God in this congregation, I now ask you as the parents of Luca, are you trusting in Jesus for your own salvation? If so, then answer, we are. And will you pray for and entrust the scriptures to Luca and seek opportunities for Christian fellowship? If so, then answer, we will. And will you verbally explain to Luca God's great plan of salvation in Jesus? Will you, by God's help, do whatever you can not to cause your son to ever stumble in his faith? If so, then answer, by God's help, yes. Luca Albuquerque, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There it is. There you go. How about that? Now you can you can keep this as a souvenir. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you this new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Now receive this lighted candle. It reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world, and whoever walks in his light will never be in darkness. Amen. Would you follow me up here, please? Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the gift of salvation through faith in Jesus. Especially today, Lord, we pray that you would guard and protect your new child in Christ, Luca Albuquerque, in this sometimes hard and cruel world, and keep him in your loving care and grace unto eternal life. Continue to be with his parents and family and friends and enable them to be good examples of the great love that you have poured out unto us all through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. I turn around. Let's welcome this new child in Christ. This is Luca Albuquerque. Okay, you can go back to your seat. Do you have other things for him? Now the children will be singing. And we get to participate.
Okay. You want to sit down here, right here, down here by me. You want to go give those to your mom? I'm not Tracy Buckley. <laughs> she was supposed to be. She was supposed to be here today, but she couldn't get away, and so I had to fill in. So I'm second hand. So do you guys always do everything you're told to do? Yeah. I'm getting mixed answers here. Some of you walk on water, and some of you don't, but. Uh, how about uh, listening? Do you always listen to what everybody wants you to do? Yes. We, don't all, we don't always listen, do we? How many times does your parents have to maybe call you to come for supper? Three times? How many times do they have to call you or to ask you to, it's time to go to bed? Just once, huh? <laughs> How about, do you any, any of you have homework to do at night? Do, do your parents ever tell you? Do you have your homework done? Are you listening? I'm, re- I'm asking these questions because, you know, today in our gospel reading, Jesus was up on a high mountain with three of his closest disciples, Peter, James, and John. And then right before his eye, their eyes, Jesus became dressed in dazzling white, brilliant clothes. He was showing, God was showing his disciples that Jesus is really true God. And there was also two other men up on the mountain that came up there with him that appeared before the disciples, Elijah and Moses. They're from the Old Testament. And so it was such a spectacular day. We call this Sunday Transfiguration Sunday. That's a big word, isn't it? Can you say transfiguration? Transfiguration. Good job. Excellent. Yeah, and what that means is that that Jesus was shown that he is truly God. And his clothes were just dazzling white, brilliant. So much they had to to close their eyes. It was so bright. And so that's what we want to remember today. And And the last thing that God told the disciples that were up there... They said, listen to Jesus. A voice came out of the cloud and said, this is my beloved son, talking about Jesus, whom I love. Listen to him. Listen to him. And so as Jesus' followers, we want to listen to what Jesus teaches us in the Bible. That's how God speaks to us today. He speaks to us through the Bible. You learn about it in Sunday school. You learn about it in church. And we're listening to what Jesus wants to teach us because he wants us to be saved. He wants to love us and forgive us all of our sins and be with him in heaven. So let's listen, okay? Let's pray. Would you pray with me and repeat after me? Dear Jesus, Jesus. thank you. For loving us. us. Help us to listen. listen. To all you have said. said. In your name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Would you like to have a treat? There's a little discussion going on, but okay.
Our first reading for this morning comes to us from St. Peter's Epistle, the second one beginning at the first chapter. Peter writes, For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased, we ourselves heard this very voice born from God, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, for no prophecy is ever produced by the will of man but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. If you are able, please rise for the reading of our gospel lesson for this morning. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it's good that we are here. If you wish, I'll make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And when the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead, this is the gospel of our Lord. Be Let us join together and profess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Please be seated. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Jesus gave his mandate, share the good news that he came to save us. Set us free. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word, inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Let none be forgotten throughout the world in the triune name of God. Go. to be faithful, standing steadfast, walking in your precepts, led by your word. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Great. 
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto each and every one of you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of scripture upon which our message this morning is based comes to us from our gospel lesson, which I shared with you just a few minutes ago. In the old movie, A Man with Two Brains, Steve Martin plays the part of a a brain surgeon who has fallen in love with an evil temptress. In one of the scenes, Martin is standing before the portrait of his late wife, asking her for guidance. He says, just show me a sign. Please, just tell me, should I marry her or not? Please, just give me a sign. And then suddenly, man, there is a cold chill swirling through the room, giving an icy feeling. And then there's there's this weird voice that says, no, 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 don't do it. Then the wall splits in two, the portrait is spinning around, all the furniture is getting toppled. And the same voice, no, no. And suddenly everything is calm and quiet. And so Steve Martin, he picks himself up, dusts himself off, and says, well, if you're not going to give me a sign, I'm going to go ahead and marry her anyway. (laughs) Steve Martin's character wasn't listening, was he? As someone who has to wear hearing aids, I know how important hearing is. And I still remember when my kids were young and growing up, they had what is called selective hearing. They would only hear what they wanted to hear, and then they would ignore the rest. But now I understand they came by it naturally because my wife tells me I too have selective hearing. Can anybody relate to that? Once a 91-year-old man went to his doctor for a checkup. Two days later, he's walking down the street with a 30-year-old lady under his arm, and he's smiling from ear to ear. He sees his doctor, and he goes up to his doctor, and he says, Thank you, doctor. I did exactly what you said. The doctor said, My goodness, what did I say? He said, Well, you told me to find a hot mama and be cheerful. No, 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 the doctor said. I said, you have a heart murmur. Be careful. (laughs) Listening. Listening is one of those great challenges in our human relationships. Author Chuck Swindoll once found himself with too many speaking engagements in far too many days. He got really irritated about his situation. He was nervous. He was tense. And one day, his little girl came to him. She wanted to tell her dad something very important that had happened to her in school that day. And so she hurriedly began saying, Daddy, I want to tell you something really important, and I'll be quick. While realizing how frustrating he must be to his daughter, he said, No, dear, you can speak slowly. Tell me what you have to say. And she said, Okay, but then I want you to listen slowly. He said, I'll never forget that piece of advice. Listen slowly. Yes, listening is a real challenge. And yes, it is not only important for us to hear, but it's also important that we listen, really listen. A survey that was conducted at the University of Detroit found that parents and children only spend about 14 and a half minutes a day talking with one another. And as tragic as that seems, it really is misleading because most of those conversations, most of those words are in idle chit-chat. Things like, what's for summer? supper? Did you get your homework done? Things like that. True, meaningful communication they discovered between parents and children sometimes only occupies about two minutes a day. And so the gift the best gift that we can give to the people we love is to truly listen to them. Listen to them. And I mention all that because you see in our gospel reading this morning as I shared with the children, we see Jesus on a high mountain with three of his closest disciples, Peter, James, and John. And then suddenly something very dramatic happens. Jesus' clothing becomes brilliantly dazzling white 
And the disciples then saw him standing there with two great men of the Old Testament, Moses and Elijah, who represent the Old Covenant as revealed in the Law and the Prophets. Jesus, of course, is the fulfillment of God's Law. And the disciples, they were afraid. They were so overwhelmed. In fact, Peter, he didn't know what to say. He said, said, Lord, let us make three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. What an amazing scene that is. Jesus, Moses, and Elijah all standing together. It was no wonder that Peter got so excited. I mean, who couldn't restrain themselves to see the fulfillment of the Old Testament concerning the promised Savior of the world there in the person of Jesus Christ? Jesus stood there in all of his divine majesty. Years later, St. John, who was up there on the mountain, He testified to that miraculous event. He said, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And Peter, too, testified to that event, as we heard in our epistle reading for this morning. Is it any wonder that Peter wanted to build some shelters and just stay up there? A pastor up in Georgia once told of a time while watching a college football game which was being played on artificial turf. The home team won that football game in dramatic fashion in the closing seconds of that game. The fans went wild. They were so excited. They poured out onto the field. They ripped down the goalposts, and people actually started cutting pieces of the artificial turf just as a remembrance of the excitement of of winning that game. Well, that pastor went on to suggest that we should get that excited about the gospel. He says we should have to re-carpet our church every year because people are cutting off pieces of the carpet to remember the excitement of God's spirit moving through the worship service. I don't recall things getting that excited around here. We're Lutheran, right? But we might. We might get that excited if we could experience what those disciples were experiencing, especially when we see what happens next. We read in our gospel lesson, then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Listen to him. Listen to who? Listen to Jesus as our Lord and Savior, of course. But then naturally comes the question as to why. Why should we listen to Jesus. Well, I can think of three reasons right off the top of my head. First of all, we should listen to Jesus because he sees things that we don't see. Secondly, Jesus cares more about us than we care about ourselves. And thirdly, Jesus knows the way to eternal life. And so briefly this morning, let's talk a little bit more about those three reasons. First of all, Jesus sees things that we don't see. And what I mean by that is is there are elements and situations in our life, in our lives, in our own individual lives, that Jesus sees and we don't. Jesus sees and we don't. Jesus is true God. Jesus is all-knowing. Jesus is all seen. Jesus sees the big picture. I think that's why St. Paul, in writing to the Romans, said, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. But not only that, we also rejoice in our sufferings. And why? Because God is in control. God is in control. Later on, Paul would also write in Romans chapter 8, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. So in response to all of that, we need to go to the Lord in prayer. We need to worship him with attentiveness in hearing what he has to say through the scriptures. We need to listen to him because he sees things that we do not see. Secondly, Jesus cares more about us than we care about ourselves. 
And you're sitting there and might ask, mm, nah, I don't know about that one, Pastor. Uh, but let's just ask ourselves a few questions. Do we always do what's right? Do we always do what's in our best interest? Like, do we always get the right amount of sleep? Do we get the right amount of exercise? Do we take the time to get the most rest that we need for our bodies, rest and relaxation? Do we always read books or watch movies or be on the internet viewing things that are spiritually, emotionally, and intellectually uplifting and growing us in our faith? Do we always do the things that we need to do to maintain uh, proper relationships with those people that God has placed into our lives? You see, if we do not do all of those things all the time, then perhaps we don't love ourselves as much as we think we do. But Jesus does. Jesus loves each and every one of us completely and without reservation. He left his throne in heaven above to come down to earth. He left his glory to associate with us in our humanity and to be in our lives. He willingly suffered and died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins and for my sins so that we would have forgiveness of those sins. His only desire is our best eternal good. Listen to him. Listen to him. Finally, we also listen to Jesus because he knows the way that leads to eternal life. There is only one path to eternal life. I know there that there are other religions that say that there are many roads that go to eternal life. But folks, that's not true. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. And it's through his death and resurrection that Jesus gained for us that promise and assurance of eternal life. And when we know him by faith and his love for us, his peace just invades our heart and our soul. And we know that life cannot defeat us. Life cannot defeat us. And even in the midst of sorrow and sufferings, we can have joy because God is in control. All of these things are ours. They're all ours by God's grace. Listen to him. Are we listening? In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us now continue our worship with our gifts and offerings.
Heavenly Father, who on the mountain revealed Jesus Christ in his unveiled divine majesty, and by wonderful testimony out of the cloud declared him your son whom you love, help us always to believe and confess that Jesus is true God. In commanding us to listen to Jesus, you have placed your divine blessing on all that he has spoken. Grant us the grace to hear his wonderful words of salvation with heartfelt faith. Gracious Father, to know Christ by faith is to know your love, possess forgiveness, and to share with all the hope of everlasting life. Continue to impress upon our hearts and minds that the fields are white unto harvest, but the laborers are few. Enable and motivate us to have a heart for the lost and the unchurched in order to do all that we can do to connect these people to Jesus. Lord, we also come before you this morning on this Transfiguration Sunday and pray your peace and comfort for Marcia Dune and her family upon the death of her father, Michael. Thank you for your victory over death in the grave. May this good news sustain all who grieve. We also pray your healing hand upon Dolores Ammerman, Carolyn Clark's grandma, and also for the healing of Bill Murphy's eyes. Julie, Julie, Julie Ryden, who is having back surgery tomorrow, and for Barb Levere, who has COVID. Dear Jesus, you are our great physician, and so we lift all these people up to you and also those that we're privately naming in our hearts this morning and pray that you would be attentive to each particular need and restore to full health according to your will. We also pray your guidance and wisdom upon Pastor John Van Slieverick as he considers our call to serve here as our senior pastor. Bless his upcoming visit, that your will may be done. Continue to be with our school, her students, their families, our teachers and staff. Prosper the work of all of our missionaries around the world and keep safe the many men and women who serve in our armed forces. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us rise and pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my true body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this also in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with each and every one of you. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness.
Now may this precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ preserve and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Go forth now and serve your Savior in peace and joy, confident of the fact that your sins are forgiven. Serve the Lord in his peace. Amen. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. We join in our closing hymn. Think about his love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace. That's right. As a reminder of why we exist as a church, let us speak together our vision statement. Through word and sacrament ministry, we share the love, joy, and peace of Jesus Christ among ourselves and with those around us. Our worship has ended. Our service now begins. Let us go in peace and...